Hello guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. Uh, today we have an unusual question. And it is unusual by the reason of this weird looking number. And we have m squared plus m equal to 44,442,222. We have to find the value of m. So how do we go about this? And from the look of things, this number is actually the major issue we are having here and that is actually why the problem is very interesting okay so i want you to just come along and then we see uh, so you can see how we handle this kind of question it's an olympiad uh, type question and then uh, i'm sure you're going to learn a lot from it so let's get started so here we have the solution and then i bring down the question m squared plus m equal to 44,442,222 so um, the first thing is to write this in a standard uh, quadratic uh, form so that we have m squared plus m minus 4444222 equal to 0 now this is this equation is actually comparable to the ax squared plus bx and if we make the comparison, we find out that a will be equal to 1, b will be equal to 1 as well, and then c will be equal to a c will be equal to minus 4, 4, 4, 4, 2, 2, 2. So that's what we have. So now the major challenge here is to how we deal with this uh, uh, weird looking number, alright? But we're going to deal with it. So what we need to do. Because the way this question is, there is, except you want to use um, uh, the quadratic formula, uh, which will be uh, kind of, uh, you know, make the problem, uh, you know, although it's going to involve some kind of large numbers. But we are trying to use a uh, algebraic uh, method here, and so we need to first deal with this number. So how do we deal with it? So let me quickly just isolate it away from the main question. So we have. 444 So, what I'm going to do is to first uh, break up this into 4,444 times 10,000, okay, plus 2,222. Because this is in millions, because you know if we multiply this by this and add it to this, we are going to get this number back, okay. So, from here, I'm going to further. Um, Simplify this. This is 444. Four. And then I'm going to rewrite. Um, I'm going to rewrite 10,000 as 9,999 plus 1. Okay, then plus 2,222. And so that's what we have. Alright, so um, now the, the goal here is to get. A number that we can represent using a variable. Now, how to do that is I'm going to rewrite this 444, 444 as 4000 times, I mean, 4 times 1111. Okay? And then, of course, I'm going to rewrite this one as well as uh, 9000, uh, 9 times 1111 plus 1. And also, if you notice this can also be written as 2000, 1000, uh, sorry, 2 times 1111. Okay, so having done that, so what we're going to do now is to say, um, let, let uh, say P equal to 1111. So, anyway, we see 1111, uh, we just simply replace that with uh, uh, p. So if that's the case, so this whole expression becomes so this whole expression now become uh, so this will now become this now becomes uh, this will be 4p okay times 9p plus 1 plus 2 
I simplify that further, I'm going to have this will become 36 p squared plus 4p plus 2p. Alright. And that will give um, 36 p squared plus 6p, which means uh, if I factorize that, that will give me 6p times 6p plus 1. So this is what I'm going to be using now to rep represent the whole of this expression. So the whole of this expression will be replaced by 6p times 6p plus 1, right? So what I'm going to do now is... Uh, So the goal of this expression, like I said, becomes 6p times 6p plus 1, right? So that uh, the equation now becomes, so the equation now would be x squared plus m minus 444. 4 to 0 now will become m squared now will become m squared plus m minus 6p times 6p plus 1 equal to 0 so um so what i'm going to do now is to further factorize this now if you look at the this standard form of the equation of the of quadratic equation x squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. Now if I take the coefficient of x squared and multiply that by the constant term, this will give me ac. And I can use this ac to factorize what we have in the middle. So in essence, what I'm saying is, if we take the coefficient of m squared, which is 1, and multiply that by, sorry, so, and use that to multiply the constant term. This is a constant term. So, what we're going to get will be, if we multiply this by this, it's going to be 6p times 6p plus 1. And then, of course, I can use this product to factorize what we have in the middle. And don't forget that, looking at this, if we find the sum, this is the product, if we find the sum, if we find the sum, the sum of this will be 6p, uh, sorry, the difference now will be, the difference of these two factors will be difference. The difference of these two factors will be 6p plus 1 minus 6p, uh, which is actually 1, alright? And we know from what we have in the middle, the question is 1, alright? So what I'm going to do now is to use 6p and 6p plus 1, I use it to factorize what we have in the middle, so that the middle term. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I have m squared, now this now becomes plus 6p plus 1 times m minus 6p times m and minus 6p brackets 6p plus 1 Oh, that is clear. All right. So from here now, I can just um, bring this, bring m squared and 6p m together. So we have m squared minus 6p m. Then of course I'll bring 6p plus one and then this together plus 6p plus one. Okay. Minus 6p times 6p plus 1 equal to 0. I hope that is clear. So I can factorize this now by bringing out m. And so in the bracket, I'm going to have m minus 6p. I'm going to do the same with this. 6p plus 1 is a common factor. So I have 6p plus 1 is a common factor. And then I will have uh, inside the bracket m minus 6p equal to 0. We are not done yet, so we can see also now that uh, 6p as m minus 6p is also a common factor. So we have 
m minus 6 p then within since i've factorized m minus 6 p out so i'm going to have in the second bracket m plus 6 p plus 1 equal to 0. so from that end we can say that m minus 6 p equal to 0 or m plus 6 p plus 1 equal to 0. Right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish it off. So from that end, we can say we can say from that end that that's m minus six p equal to zero or uh, okay, m plus 6p plus 1 equal to 0. So what we have now is m equal to 6p or m equal to minus 6p plus 1. Okay, and don't forget that m, but m is equal to 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so m is equal to this. So that, uh, I'm rather p is equal to this so if p equal to this it means that our m will be 6 times 1 1 1 1 or m will be equal to minus 6 times uh, 6 times 1 1 1 1 plus 1 so this will give us m to be equal to 6,666 or m will be equal to minus 6,000 Okay, so uh, those are the two results. But how do we can we actually confirm? Okay, we can actually confirm the results. Okay, so let's see if we can confirm the results. Now we know that from our original equation, we know that uh, a equal to c a or m. We know that uh, from the original equation, m squared plus m minus 6 uh, minus 4, 4, 4, 4, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, that's m, that a equal to 1, b equal to, uh, uh, b equal to 1, and c equal to minus 4, 4, So how do we confirm this? We know that uh, um, we know that from the equation we derived, from the equation we derived, which is m squared plus m minus six p times six p plus one equal to zero. Sum of roots. The sum of roots of any quadratic equation that is alpha plus beta is actually minus b over a. Okay, and we know the value of a and b. For b, we have minus one, and for a, we have one, so we have minus one. Okay, so what about if we find the sum of this? We also know that from what we've done, we can actually get the sum of the roots. Uh, the sum, because we have M1 to be 6,666 and M2 to be minus 6,667. So if we find the sum, uh, sum of the roots that would be m1 plus m2. Alright, so we want to know if um, if it will be equal to minus 1. Alright, so m1 is 6, 6, 6, 6 plus minus 6, 6, 6, 7. This is actually 6, 6, 6, 6 minus 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 7. 
that is just minus one. So which is actually correct with what we obtained here. So there you have it guys. Um, in short to go over uh, the results, I mean the, the, the solutions and see um, if there's anything that is uh, amiss. And I'm sure possibly you may have a better way of solving this. Please let's uh, let's leave a comment in the comment section if you have a much faster and a better way of solving it. And I'll see you in my next video.